Hi, we are an ordinary family trying to live an extraordinary life. Even though Barrier is our name, we never let anything get in our way. We are the Barriers, Andrew, Maggie, and Laura, a family who loves to explore new places and take on new challenges. Like any family, we are also a team, ready to take on the world. Spending our time outdoors, doing the things we love with friends and family is what we cherish most. There's no such thing as a stranger, just a friend we haven't met yet. Welcome to our adventure. What is up everybody? Today I'm going to show you how I made a roof rack on our pop-up camper. I looked around, I tried to find videos of how to do it, and I really didn't find that many for how to make <clears throat> sorry, your own roof rack to go on a pop-up camper, or really any camper for that matter. Um, so I figured out a way that I'm just going to make my own, and it should work with pretty much every roof attachment that I have, whether it's the Yakima or Thule or just a generic Walmart brand. Anything should be able to strap onto these roof racks. This is what one side will look like when it's all said and done. Um, I'm going to do the other side with you so I can show you every step that I did. Um, and hopefully it works. So far, as you can see, it rained today. There is water on the side of the strut everywhere here. But um, nothing is leaking so far. And let's get to it. So first thing is first. Before I drilled any of my holes or did anything, I laid out a full length of unistrut. That is what I used, a piece of strut. You can buy it at Lowe's, Home Depot, any supply house. If you have a friend who is an electrician or a plumber or a carpenter or anything like that, who might have an account at a supply house, it is much cheaper to buy it from a supply house than from Lowe's or Home Depot. But you can see this is what a piece of Unistrut is. When you buy it, most places it comes in a 10 foot length. You can buy them in a 20 foot length from a supply house. Um, that is basically it. This is a 10, this is a full 10 foot length going down the trailer and I cut a six inch piece for the end, or yeah, for the ends and a four inch piece for the middle and just bolted it on. I already have them cut and painted and ready to go over here. And as you can see it, I don't know if you can with the camera or not, I already marked out where it's gonna go with the pencil. You just lay it over there, figure out where you want it. I did mine four inches off the side. I think it was like three inches from the front to the front of the strut. I honestly don't remember the exact number for that one. I used a full 10 foot length of strut, laid it out, measured it off so I knew it was gonna be straight all the way down, marked it, opened the pop-up, checked to make sure that there's nothing in the way for when I drill these holes. You don't wanna be drilling through a light or electrical cords, anything like that. Um, you wanna make sure that it's free space in the ceiling under it. So I did that, marked the front, I marked one in the middle, and I marked the end. Now, what you're gonna need if you do it this way, you're going to need a drill with a 3 8 bit. I used the strut, which I already showed you. I got two inch bolts just from Lowe's. Um, they're 3 8 all thread. Got some 3 8 nuts. Got some washers. And a really important thing, you can either use silicone for it. I use these rubber washers. I just happened to see them in Lowe's and thought that would be a good idea. I'll try them out. And they've worked so far today with the rain. Um, but yeah, that's that. So, first things first, you want to lift up your pop-up a little bit and make sure that your sides are not in the way of where you're gonna be drilling because you do not wanna drill a hole in the side of your tent. So make sure you open it up. I pulled the beds out of each end to make sure I don't drill into a mattress or to make sure this isn't pressed up against the corner where I'm going to be drilling. So right now I know there's nothing there, even though I don't have the sides all the way pulled out, I have it up enough, I can reach my hand up in there, and I can feel that there's nothing right there where I'm going to drill these holes. So we're going to go ahead and drill these first two holes. I'm going to set you over here. Simple enough. Drill the first two holes. Grab this so you can see a little better, maybe. Good 
don't need that stuff. Be careful wiping this with your finger. This aluminum can get a little sharp where you drill through. I'm not worried about filing it at all. So I have a two inch bolt. I have a two inch washer under it. That's just to keep it from pulling up through. So I can stick my hand under from here, stick this up, get it through the first hole. Rubber washer goes on next. Stick that on there. I put on one of these little wide ones. Then the strut will go on. Then a little washer. And then a nut. And I'm just going to start it finger tight. It'll just be kind of loose and flopping right now. I'll go ahead and put one in the second hole. Push the rubber washer on. The next washer. Put the strut on it. Lay your next washer on it. And put the nut on. Then you're going to take your 9 16 box wrench, or sorry, a deep socket. You are going to snug it up on there. I traced out where my strut was, so I knew it was going to be relatively close here. So I'm not going to go super tight with it. I'm going to leave it a little bit of loose so I can slide it and adjust it later. But for the most part, it's that simple and it takes no time at all. Um, so let's do the rest of them. Sorry, camera fell over in the middle of that. I went ahead and drilled middle two holes. Blow that styrofoam off of there. And the last two holes. Once I have those finger tight, they're still loose in there, but they're just held up by the nuts. I'm gonna set this to that four inch mark that I had. Then I can go ahead and tighten it up the rest of the way. It's important when you're tightening these, you don't need to crank them down super tight. This. It's a really thin roof. There's a layer of like foam insulation and then there's another thin layer just like this on the inside. And you don't need to go so tight that you're crushing that and pinching it. Um, with the two bolts in each spot, it should be plenty tight to be able to hold it without damaging your pop-up or your roof on your regular camper, whatever you're mounting a rack to. I've got all three of these brackets on the side up. Six inch in the front, a four inch in the middle, a six inch on the end. Once you have all of those in place, we will get the long 10 foot piece of strut. I'm gonna go grab it and I will bring it over right now. Right back in just a second.
so for me I decided to line them up perfectly at the front so they are nice and even right up here and then we'll put a spring nut in up here this is a spring nut just this bottom part usually they have springs on them I pop them off and then I just have a little one inch bolt and a washer on it and the way these work let's see if I can get this somewhere where I can make sure I can see what you're seeing you'll take the spring nut the spring nut part of it you're gonna go underneath this strut in between the two of them you keep it sideways it's the easiest way to do it I'm gonna try to get it in the middle hole I honestly can't see it from here I'm too short so I'm in the second hole back so it's in the middle of the uh, of the six inch piece of strut instead of being at one of the ends once you get it started just a little bit that's enough you put it in there you can grab your deep oil or use your fingers whatever you prefer and when you spin it it's going to spin that spring nut and it'll hold itself sideways in place inside of that strut I'm not going to go super tight with it so I can pivot it at the middle and the other end. So let's go down. Next one. Ooh, that one's tight. I need that. On this one, it really doesn't matter. I just chose the front one to get this in. Same thing, put the spring nut in sideways, get your bolt started, and then snug it up a little bit with the socket. Once you have them all started by finger, you can go around with your wrench and your socket and you can snug them up, make sure they're lined up how you want. I have it lined up perfectly at the front and see it's just a barely off here, which you really can't even tell. But I will go ahead, double check this one's good. So we'll snug, snug that one on up. middle one that feels like it's lined up pretty well we'll snug that one up uh, that one popped up. that one's not in the middle we will go ahead and snug up this end one down here And this isn't going anywhere. The 
so we've got the base mount for the roof rack for the pop-up all up boom done this side is up bolted on nice and tight not going anywhere other side is bolted on nice and tight not going anywhere one thing you do have to keep in mind when you're doing this i forgot to mention before if you have an ac unit on your pop-up this is an older pop-up it does not have an ac unit a roof rack might have to be up higher or you may just have to find a way to work around it you might not be able to have kayaks or surfboards or snowboards whatever it is that you're packing on your roof rack to go on an adventure uh, we just have this little vent that sticks up which you can see just barely skims across the top of this and all my roof rack attachments are going to sit up a couple inches higher than that so I have plenty of room to get over that when you do this roof rack um, most of these struts that you buy are galvanized they will not rust I painted them at the ends where they are cut however they will rust so at the end of each piece of strut like there and there they will rust there if they've been cut because it's not galvanized that's just exposed steel um, but the rest of it like this main body of it shouldn't rust but I think it looks better painted so I painted it my next part for these uh, roof racks are your cross braces they're gonna go across that your actual roof rack attachments will attach to the part that I've been struggling with most is do I let it overhang and get the most space that I can out of it or do I stop it flush at the edge of the, the roof or, or the, the edge of this strut um, and I honestly don't know yet it'll be a uh, try it and see what works I mean I guess if you make it longer you can always cut it shorter down the road if you decide you don't like it which isn't that big of a deal um, one thing that is very important when you're doing this roof rack I used regular deep strut um, for the main base of it just because it's sturdier it's stronger it's not gonna bend or bow in the middle but for any roof rack attachment to work you need to use shallow strut it's only five eighths of an inch thick by inch and five eighths across um, and any of your clamps should clamp right across them but I think I'm gonna go with it hanging over for now I can cut it later if I need to so I'm gonna let it hang over about four inches on each side I'll make it so that the third hole in the strut lines up on each one mark it cut it and we will paint it I unfortunately do not have enough of those spring nuts with me today but I will have to get some and hopefully tomorrow I'll be able to bolt this the rest of the way up and have a roof rack attachment on there to show you what it looks like. But I'm going to go cut it and we will be back. So once you have the main base for the roof rack up, bolted on, ready to go, nice and secured, like so, you can take your shallow strut. And I honestly don't know the numbers that I cut these. I laid the shallow strut on here. And I knew that I wanted it to be about where the edge of the trailer is because I wanted the maximum space possible to have uh, to have room to attach stuff on for the roof rack attachments. And now I found spring nuts. This is what they look like when you buy them from the store. They have a spring on them like this. You can leave them on there if you want. It really doesn't matter. Um, so I took shallow strut, cut them to however wide the trailer was for mine. It's important when you go to cut these, really, I guess when you go to bolt your big strut on there, you need to make sure that your shallow strut will line up with the hole. The holes in shallow strut are two inches apart on center. So if you're an even number, your holes should line up from, say it was, I think these were, I don't know, I think it was 70 inches apart from the center of this strut to the center of that strut down there. You just want to make sure that your holes line up in the strut so you can bolt to it. We're going to put a piece, a bolt through there. We'll put the spring nut on here. Get it started by finger. I'm just going to have this first one all the way up at the front. I may change that later. I don't know. I'm going to have to play around with roof rack attachments and see what it does. But it goes on super simple, just like that. And that's 
that. We're gonna do the same thing on the other side. Okay, we're falling over. Sorry, the trailer's kind of parked on a little bit of a slight hill here. Once again, put the spring down. You can see these grooves in it. They're gonna grab in the inside of the strut. So we're gonna put that on. Get the washer through, get the bolt started. Here you can see it easily on this one. How the spring nut turned sideways in there so it's been, it's pulling up against the inside of the strut and that's how it holds it down That's that for the roof racks. Um, I unfortunately do not have enough shallow strut for the cross braces. I have enough for two of them. So I have like a full set of a roof rack here basically of the way it would look if it's on your car. And I'm gonna put another set with two pieces of shallow strut on the back half back here. Ooh, tripped. Right there and there. So on the front half, we'll put a cargo carrier or maybe a bike rack or something, something that's not too long. And then on one side of the back half will have kayaks, and on the other side we'll have probably a surfboard rack or a snowboard fishing pole rack, something like that. And uh, for the next video, probably I'll make an outdoor shower that'll go along the side for when we're out camping and there's nowhere to shower off or if we ever just have the dogs with us and they go play in the water. Sometimes it's nice to be able to give them a bath because, you know, dogs stink when they get wet, especially ours. Isn't that right, Jitterbug? Uh-huh. That's right. Well, Thanks for watching this video. See you again next time.